This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We're rocking out already, man. Um, I got to explain some of the people because I can't help this. I have uh, one allergy in the entire world. I'm not allergic to anything other than the Malaluca tree in southern Florida. I was sneezing and coughing and blowing my nose. I, man, I got nailed by it because Catherine and I went for a long walk yesterday. And, you know, you try to go through forested areas. It's kind of a pretty walk and all that. I woke up this morning. I was like, you know, I kind of feel a little different. I was like, Jesus, Palomino. <laughs> so what is it about an allergy that would make, what is it, loosens up your vocal cords or something? Um, yeah, I believe like that's when your vocal cords are loose, your voice is a little lower, but so I'd assume it has something to do with that where the allergies and I don't know, AJ, do you have any, I actually have no idea. Cause I'm trying to think like maybe because you've been like coughing, sneezing and everything all yeah. night, you ha- yep. they haven't gotten a chance to like rest and like condense or whatever overnight while you're really not using them. So that's why you're sounding a little lower. You get a little more gunk in there too. Maybe kind of yeah, probably. So. Yeah, and I know it's not great to, you know, Google your symptoms and self-diagnose. But oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Dying. But it could be, you know, a little <laughs> allergy-related laryngitis. says uh, that uh, is the result of an inflammation of the larynx that can be caused by infections, vocal strain, or allergies. Vocal strain. You have to yell pretty damn loud to get your voice this deep, I'll tell you that. Jesus. <laughs> I would imagine anyway. Uh, you know, I it, it's fine. I'll I'll get over it. But I literally cannot. I was told by because uh, I called my buddy, the doctor, and he said you're just going to have to stay in. I'm I'm allergic to the Malaluca tree, and it does this to me only every few years or something. But yeah, I I can't even go outside today because it'll get worse. I'll call in tomorrow. Yeah, so anyway, it's really great. Somehow it's going to get deeper than this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'd be great all day when we have somebody pop on. Okay, so we got we got uh, Judd on in mm-hmm. uh, you know, about 10 minutes somewhere. Yeah. Should I just go on and go, you rang? I'll just pretend. What was that guy's name, Lurch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, from what, what, Adam's family? I think it was Adam's family. Yeah. yeah. You rang. <laughs> just be like, I'm sorry. I thought I was calling into the Tom Bernard pod. <laughs> wrong number. I got the wrong number. I don't know what the hell happened. It all works out in the end. But yeah, I just uh, I felt terrible last night. My voice wasn't as deep last night, so I went to bed and I actually slept for nine hours. That's how horseshit I felt. But then I woke up this morning and go, Oh, that was. I'm like, Whoa. Because I didn't know I was going to sound like that. I mean, it even snuck up on me, so whatever. It must be really great for women, don't you think? They get this thing of women. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to my boyfriend, Rick, and he told me. <laughs> right. like, I mean, not that the guy with a voice like that couldn't have a boyfriend named Rick. That's not what I'm saying, but you know. Right. And I'm looking at these Malaluka trees, like a picture of them. And yeah, I can absolutely see why you are having a reaction to it. Because this thing looks like... It looks like a dandelion, but then but, but <laughs> the, the, the one that you like try to blow yeah. and like the wish and blah, blah, yes. blah. Yes, yes. It's that all over, and then it's a tree. So yep. like yep. way bigger. Yeah, I can imagine how this is just messing you up. It is kicking my ass yet again. It happens about every five years, something like that. It doesn't happen every year, so I don't know. It's, it's when I'm in town or the growth period doesn't you know match up or whatever the hell it is, but... I uh, last night I felt terrible. I went to bed like not not throwing up or anything, but coughing and blowing my nose and doing all that stuff. But then I woke up this morning. And was like, well, I yeah, good. That's really good, Tom. But <laughs> we'll slog through it as we always do. And I, I would imagine as the show goes on, my voice will lighten up anyway. I would think, just from usage, don't you think? Yeah, I feel like like that's that's how I when I'm sick, like mm-hmm. or like I'm having stuff like that. It's the same thing where. I feel my worst in the morning and then like I shower, I go through the day and like lunchtime, I'm feeling a little better later at the night. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then I wake up and I go through everything again. I set myself back. Yeah, it's terrible. It's all true. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you guys. And Mm -hmm. I I like to make it clear to everybody that I like, you know, it doesn't matter what political party your belief or whatever you have. If you're doing something, I don't really understand. I'm going to bring it up. 
Mm -hmm. What I don't understand is why are we all of a sudden paying everybody's college debt? Forty billion? Is that what they're saying? Forty billion dollars, something like that? And maybe that's just round one. But I mean, the only reason I'm bringing this up, and I think it's a very, very good point, because what's going to happen if you do that? And of course, I'm not even going to say who's doing it, but but it's all to buy votes. That's what, this is all about getting votes for themselves. That it's not mm-hmm. really about saving anybody any money. It's about me, me, me. Like all our politicians in America have become filthy pigs. Isn't that sad? Yeah, and I would assume that the reason for paying student debt, I mean, is less about the students that you're paying the debt of, and more about just getting money to the people who lent that money out to the students like to the universities or banks that are there because they're trying to you know put some money back in his friends pockets and to my understanding yeah, i don't maybe. think anything has been like officially approved or passed mm, yet not it's, yet no like this could very easily well just be struck down similar to the last one so yeah oh yeah that's true yeah so yeah, but I, I just know why on earth would you think that we should pay for your college debt and if it's true i went to college for one day i want my money where's right. my dough I've recently paid off all my student loans. And I get <laughs> I to... mine retroactively <laughs> paid off as well. Sorry, Tevin. <laughs> you did it too quick. The people like me that are slow to the punch, I'm going to get rewarded. <laughs> I just, honest to God, it's just the pushing and pushing. And it's always about votes. It's mm-hmm. not about helping anybody. It's buying your vote. That's what they're doing. And both parties do it. I was watching the news this morning, and there are Republicans and Democrats just blowing steam out their ass. It's like, would you people, could you ever just shut up and do your job? How about that? That'd be good. Yeah, and I think it would, I would be curious to see if they actually did, you know, pass it and they paid off everybody's student loans, how that would affect future college students or just the price of college in general. Because people, if I knew that, oh, I don't really have to pay this. The government eventually is just right. going to wipe this clean. I'll get to it when I get to it. But also, why wouldn't people in my age group go, hey, wait a minute, where's my money? Uh, you know, not me personally, I'm mm-hmm. talking about. But hey, I paid all that money to go to college back in the day. Why do they get paid back and I don't? That makes yeah. no sense. And where's all this money coming from? And where's it coming from, exactly? And to my understanding, too, it's it's part of to also combat like how high of uh, like interest rates are. Because one, mm-hmm. one of the main yes. groups, people that would be rewarded in a sense for this is people that have been paying for i want to say it's like 10 years already yeah, but yeah, their balance yeah. is still higher than the initial amount that they borrowed yep which i feel like that's just predatory insurance or like predatory like uh interest rates yeah. at that point because if you if you've been paying for 10 years and hitting your steady and you're still higher than your original amount borrowed that is insane yeah well colleges aren't colleges anymore they're big business like everything else major colleges well almost all colleges but mostly the major colleges this is all about this is all about making money for themselves this is big business has nothing to do with education nothing this is all where's my money man you need to somebody told me now to get like one year of a of a law school education at some of the east coast colleges it's like over a hundred grand for one year, jeez, is mm-hmm. that even is that even high enough? Does it get higher than that sometimes? Oh, I would. Have, it's got to get higher God. than that in some places. But with schools like, especially like law schools, I feel like you're going there because it's you know we're so pretentious and we want you know we network everywhere, and so you're mm-hmm. paying for the connections rather than because you can get the same education anywhere. I would think. Yeah, I see, Devin. I think that's a very good point. These these big time colleges aren't so big time anymore. Other only by name, of course. If mm-hmm. you graduated from Harvard, see to me, I got to be honest with you. Pretty much everybody I ever met that went to Harvard's an asshole. Not everybody, but almost all of them. I'm serious. You ever known any Harvard graduates? No, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm they- not a Harvard grad, but I've known people that went to like other prep or not prep schools, other Ivy league schools on the East coast. Yeah, and yeah. every conversation that I've had with them oh, yeah. is like the, <laughs> do you want to go to, you know, random school and drink with a bunch of frat guys? Or do you want to, you know, come over here and hang out with future presidents and the people oh, that are really going to shape America and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know what? I'll pass. <laughs> how about not shape? How about ruin America? Cause yeah. that's what they're doing. 
All right. They didn't say it was in good shape. <laughs> no, they did not. That's exactly true. I just wish we'd understand. Okay, so now we got to pay for what? Uh, what is the number now? Like 18 billion people that snuck into our country. So you got to pay for them. And then we got to pay for your college education. And then we got to pay for We don't have enough money to pay for all that stuff. Where are you going to get all that money? Right? Mm-hmm. I, don't I, just, I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. We're not going to be able to get to, and it's just to buy you. And I, I, I'm not blaming just one side for it. It's both sides that do this. It's like, stop pissing our money away. You want to go to college? Then pay for it. You want to drive a car? Then pay for it. You want to live in a house? You should pay for it. Right? Yeah. We always had to. Yeah, that's how I always lived my life was, yeah, I'm not yeah. you got to pay for it. That's what I assume. But I guess if college is different now. Free college, college for everybody. Free college for everyone. I wonder I if mean, I can get my one day of tuition back. They should send you a check for like twenty bucks. Yeah. Twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> twenty dollars. That's right. Yeah. Look, I know, I know it's a lot of pressure. It's look, the problem was created by the colleges by jacking their rates through the roof. They're the ones that caused the problem. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And then I mean, as a high school kid you really fed kind of one narrative of you're yes. going to graduate right. here. Then you got to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. So you can go to college. You know, there are other avenues where you can, you know, maybe a trade school, yeah. learn a, you know, a skill, go on a people that go travel, go walk the country for a year and then figure out what you want to do. But yeah, as an 18 year old, I had no idea what the hell I wanted to do. No, I didn't either. And again, like I said, you need help. I understand if you really do need help is one thing, mm-hmm. but if you're just looking to get off scot-free, that's different. You know? Yeah, and there's probably a lot of those people. I would think so. Yeah, I think so. We'll take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes. We'll bitch at Judd Zolgad because I didn't see the final, but the Twins were losing to one to nothing last I checked. So I don't know if they won the game or not. <laughs> By the look on AJ's face, I'm saying no, they did not win the game. What? They suck. That team is terrible. They what can't you- hit. We better save this for Judd. <laughs> What do you think? I'll keep you on the edge of your seat <laughs> as a surprise for the final score. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please do. Yeah. I just hope it's not like 35 to nothing or something. Like that. No, 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 never. Okay, good, this, good. this team? Never. Did they get any hits at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They can't hit at all. I think Byron Buxton got one in the fourth. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> one hit in the fourth <laughs> inning. That would be good. All right, we'll be right back. A little, uh, we'll check in with Judd Zolgad from Score North right after this. Tom Bernard here for Livia Weight Control Centers. Now is the time to get a jump on summer. You could lose up to 20 pounds or more in your first eight weeks, the Livia Way. Now, I got to jump in there because, uh, and here's the reason that I have to jump in there. Because uh, yesterday was my first day on the Livia program. I was talking to Carol about that this morning. Um, first day on the Livia program yesterday. And... Uh, so I, you know, went on the program, followed the program. You know, I do my walking and all that stuff, and that's all part of it. But, you know, the, the sad news for me is yesterday I lost four pounds. In one day, I lost four pounds, okay? So I sat down and I did the, uh, the math. So basically, if I do this, that for, for 11 more straight days, I'll have lost 50 pounds in 12 days. So, you know, what do you think? Or 48, I guess. It would be 48 pounds at that time. But in any case, um, yeah, it just, four pounds. I ate four meals, you know, they, throughout the day they're spaced out. It works really, really well. Uh, I, but I just, I wanted to joke around with Carol and Heather and, you know, Beth and Paul, Dr. Pauly and all that and just say, hey, if this is only going to last me another 11 days, I'm kind of sad because I want to hang out with you guys. But if I only got 11, if I lose four pounds a day for the next 11 days, I will be at my goal. What do you think of that? Now, I'm guessing I probably won't, but I just thought I'd bring it up. So, look, here's the deal. As a brand ambassador for Livia, I really appreciated the one-on-one support that I received at my Livia Center. I couldn't have reached my goal without their help. That is a fact, by the way, and that's the whole deal. I received, well, again, my goal the first day was to lose two pounds, and I lost twice that much. I lost four pounds yesterday. So that is the deal. Join Livia today and get your first eight weeks free. Visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. And Livia is now offering GLP number one medications or GLP one, I should say. Uh, 
quiet the food noise, and see accelerated results. By summer, visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Start your weight loss journey now and get a jump on some of the Livia way and lose, a, maybe you lose four pounds the first day. Who knows? Thanks, man. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. You know... It is time to talk about the high taxes in Minnesota, and they are high. There's what the second highest in the country now, I think. I think that's what it is in any case. And how much could you be saving with a Sioux Falls uh, location? One of the first things Minnesota companies that have expanded moved to, so like Sioux Falls is a great town anyway, you know that. But they notice the lower tax bills. Companies don't pay corporate or personal state income tax, and their other expenses are lower in Sioux Falls too. Those business leaders started out on a website, of course, SiouxFallsDevelopment.com, where you'll find a lot of information you need to make the Sioux Falls decision. You'll discover just how quickly and efficiently you can get your operation started in Sioux Falls. Not only will your business be up and running sooner, you'll also be making higher profits. The National Tax Foundation's new index shows Minnesota at number 45, paying way too many taxes. And South Dakota at number two, one of the best tax climates in the nation, as a matter of fact, you know that. 2024 is the time to make your move to Sioux Falls. Check out SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, here's the deal, Judd. Um, you know, we talked to you about this, talked to Phil about this. Yes. I do not know the score. I checked this twin score once last night because I had stuff to do, so I couldn't watch the game. Uh, they were down one to nothing. Uh, and I know, particularly with Phil, I didn't do it as much with you, I don't think, but with Phil, I did. This team sucks, it's terrible. <laughs> Well, you told me that all of spring training, and I yes, told I you to calm down because it was <laughs> spring training, and now I can confirm that now, now you were right. They suck. They're terrible. They're, They're terrible. Four to two, by the way, last oh, night. God. Four to two. They actually held a oh. two to one lead at uh, at um, one point, but yeah, they lost four to two. That this homestand, the best thing that's taken place was the Sunday rainout. Because we, then they didn't have <laughs> exactly. to play a game. Um, and last night, let's see here, grand total last night for the Minnesota Twins, three hits. Three hits. Three hits. Three hits. Yeah, they, oh. um, they, uh, the bats are, the bats are non-existent. I, no. I, we, no. that was the one thing we talked about. We were all very confident in the ability of this team to, you know, to hit, to generate runs. And so far they have been, for the most part, abysmal. No, I mean terrible. I don't know that we all agreed on that. What if you well, yeah, that's that. probably true. We <laughs> thought that that would be the least of their problems. We thought yes, starting right. starting pitching was going to yep. be the problem and that everything else would sort of, you know, that the bats would generate some runs. But, yeah, it's uh, it's so far been, I mean, it's eight games in. They're three and five, but it's been bad. Three. Let me ask you a question about that. Because mm-hmm. it said L.A. is, was, is now nine and five. Nine and four. Nine and four. How the hell did they play so many more games than the Twins did? That's a very good question. Um, Weird. You got the rain out on Sunday, but more importantly, yeah, you've yep. got off days, built-in off days for the Twins. Yep. There have been a ton of them so far. And, um, and yeah, so the Dodgers have just scheduled for more games. But, yeah, it yep. does seem odd the Twins are so, if, so far behind most teams in games played. No question. I mean, it's a situation where where we are, we started the show this morning talking about money grubbing. You know, about how our colleges have just become money grubbing shitholes. Basically, it's not college anymore. It's a way to make more and more and more and more money. That's what it's all about. 
And that's the same thing. <clears throat> and look, I'm not burying the twins gave me a lot of happiness, but that was, of course, you know, 35 years ago. Right. It's, case, been, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. But the minute they talked about, well, we got to cut back on expenses, I'm like, this team is going to be terrible. As soon as you start focusing on money and not baseball, you're going to suck. Well, right? it, yeah. Well, the weird thing, too, is that they did it publicly, I think. Yes. I think Joe Pohl had the kid who now runs the team was trying to be transparent. But you just won, you know, your first playoff game in how long? And that, what was weird yep. to me was why would you publicly put it out there that you're going to cut back? When people know. are excited, and yeah, it, they they are now experimenting, starting last night, Tom, with closing the entire grandstand upper deck oh. for the for the rest of April, oh. because they and because they draw, you know, they don't draw well, and right now they're clearly not going to be drawing well, no. and so the people who have ticket packages in the upper deck are being relocated down lower, uh, but they. That entire upper deck, including those two bars way up there, are uh, are closed for the rest of the month. So, oh, see, that's sad. I, honest to God, could you just? You're billionaires, for God's sake. Could you just piss away a little money so Uncle Tommy can enjoy going to a Twins game? Because right now, I'm not going to any Twins games. I can tell you that they're they're horrible. I think you should go sit uh, close to the field and ride the players like you used to. By the way, you know what I got to do? As I got to tell you that my voice is like this because I'm allergic to malaleuca trees. I got very, very ill last night. Oh. Malaleuca trees. AJ already looked them up, and they look like death plants. <laughs> they really do. Malaleuca trees. They Not familiar. Trees. Yeah, it's a, it's a southern Florida thing, I think. But in any case, could you imagine me going after players at, today with this voice? You're horrible. You suck. Can you imagine I... hearing that? I actually sort of like it. That's good. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, yes. Yeah. Well, maybe. I, I mean, you're right about that. It's, uh, it's, um, I think more intimidating. Well, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I told the story to these guys that this morning I went out. To, I didn't go outside. I had to walk in the building because I can't go outside today. The doctor said, you need to stay indoors at least one day, maybe more. But I get on the elevator and there's a guy on the elevator with about a probably three year old little girl. And he goes, good morning, how you doing? I go, not too bad, how are you doing? And she goes, daddy, I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, it's a Barry White voice. It is. A, oh, I should do a couple of Barry Whites. Barry's gone now, isn't he? I think he is. One of the greatest experiences of my life is walking through the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, and here comes Barry White with not one, two, or three, but four women holding on to his arms, two on each side. <laughs> oh, Barry. <laughs> Very, very sly, sly, sly. I love it. <laughs> Why am I not surprised, too? Oh, to God, no. It was, it, it, and he was wearing a huge coat. What do we got coat. back then? We got Barry White and Tom Jones, right? It's not unusual. God, I love those guys. I did. I love those guys. It was great music back in the day. But, uh, yeah, Barry, uh, Barry's a big fella, but he did have this, I've heard people say, maybe I should recut that song now that he's dead. <laughs> It's Too much of anything good. is not good for you, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna recut that song. That's I think. Not bad. I'll put That's her good. Out you on got the it going. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! So what we're trying to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, is avoid talking about the Minnesota Twins because they're horrendous. That's what we're doing right here, talking mm -hmm. about this. No, I don't know. I, I have no faith that this team's gonna go anywhere this year. This team has no talent. None. Well, I mean, I'd love to say, I'd love to say, oh no, hold on, but they're showing right now. They they look they mm -hmm. they're dead at the plate. Yep. Um, the bullpen, which, which is depleted because of injuries as well, blew the you know blew the game last night, and they but they can't hit. They just no, can't hit. They cannot hit. They don't have in 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 their in their law uh, in this homestand, Tom. I I believe they do not have a hit yet with a runner in scoring position. <laughs> And it was only 0 for 2 last night, I think, because they simply didn't get guys in scoring position. Uh, and it's it's not man. Well, it is management because they're the ones that cut all. You know why Sonny Gray was allowed to leave? I'll never understand. I do not understand why that happened. And not replaced. And, and not That's replaced exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm I'm sorry, but you're multi multi billionaires. You want to own a team? Then spend the money so we can enjoy it. This is not a money making deal. Matter of fact, you should not be allowed to make money by owning a sports franchise unless you sell it. What do you think so, of that? 
Ooh, that's uh, I think a lot of fans would like that. I think a lot of billionaires would bail on the proposition of owning a sports team. But you you know what this is? This is the thirty what thirty five years later. This is the opposite of of the old uh, KQ Viola pennies for pitchers. Pennies for pitchers. Yep. This is the opposite. This is pe- pennies for Polad. <laughs> Pennies for. I wonder if he'll be nice to me like Frankie V was because I ran into Frankie after, after I started that. He thought, of, Tom, it's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> he thought it was wonderful. He, you ever met him? Viola? I uh, Maybe briefly once, God, or, but not. The hell of a pitcher. Oh, the my circle, God. The circle curve. Remember the circle yep. curve? God, it was yep. a great pitch. But now I miss Frank Viola. I used to Frankie V, man. That was fun. Didn't you guys of- have an actual uh, donation uh, bin in yes. like in like yep. the KQ parking lot? And remember what Bob Sansevier did? No. So we have a bin out there, and in case you know people showed up and are going to pour a bunch of pennies in, we had a, an outdoor toilet set up for them if they needed to pee or something while they're out there. Guy calls me, he goes, Tom, I'm out on the front lawn right now. I go, Yeah. So what's up? He goes, well, I'll just put some money in the in the Garrett hopper because a guy named Garrett was the one that delivered the the bin that everybody was putting the money in, the Garrett Hopper, it was called. Okay. Sandy's out on the front lawn taking a dump in the bathroom. Of like, course he was. What are you doing? I know, Bob. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> not, not at all, does it? It's like, Bob, that's for the people to pee, not for I, you to drop a deuce. I was going to say, there, you you never intended for that to be a place for her to do all of the business. <laughs> Sandy. I love Sandy, but he's nuts. You know oh, that, Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, Sandy was covering the Vikings for the Star Tribune when I started as a clerk oh, in the really? sports department. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's back when Sandy was wound tighter than he oh, is today. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he was, oh, he yeah. was an, he was an intense young man at the time, <laughs> I would describe him. <laughs> he always gets mad because I say our, my first in- interaction with Sandy was, he was covering a Vikings preseason game in Kansas City, and he filed a story. You know, and ba- back then, you, you filed a story, you know, through yeah. through the phone line connection. And so a clerk in the office had to check. And it was my first day, and he calls as, this is San Severe from Kansas City. Check for my story. And I was new, so I sort of had an idea. So it took me too long. You know, is it there? Is the story oh, there? Oh, God. Just, and, and he gets mad at me now because I'm like, the first thing you did was yell at me. Well, I don't know if he was yelling or if that's just his regular voice. Because True. I remember the first time he ever called me on a cell phone, uh, I was at home. And I answered the phone, and I talked to him. And Catherine goes, who the hell was that? And I said, it was Sandy. Do I? She goes, I could hear every word he was saying. Honestly, I was like, hey, Tom, how you doing? How's yep. everything going? I was like, Jesus, would you calm down? I love Sandy, though. It's Sandy's whole family. You ever met his wife and kids? Um, No. Great people. No. Really good family. And Much she was a cheerleader, nice. right? Yeah, his wife mm-hmm. was a cheerleader for the, for the, Vikings. For the Vikings. That's right, That's okay. Exactly right. No, no he's, doubt about it. He's a trip. He's great, but uh, he's Sandy. quite the character, I would describe him as, which is why I was not surprised when, when you said he decided to use your small bathroom for means that it was probably not <laughs> intended for. Yeah, it's for people to pee, Bob, not for you to drop a deuce, okay? <laughs> Settle down, will you? All right, pal, any closing words? Uh, twins again tonight. Don't watch. Thanks. <laughs> don't, <laughs> Those are my closing words. <laughs> All right, we'll leave the closing words right there because I love that closing. It's a good one. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, pal. See you guys. Judd's all gab. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break. Be right back. A little Chris Eggert coming up next. Mike Glendell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. You do a great job. Thank you for that. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale. It's going on right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code TOM, you get free shipping. And that's on your entire order, as a matter of fact. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers, 100% 100% made in the USA, on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146 and use promo code TOM. 
and you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. What do you think of that? God, I love Jim Paul. we got to have Jim Paul in one time. Such a great guy. I've known him for, God, 40 years probably. In addition... To having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo Alls can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. If you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one and don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim; he's a great guy. Met him. Just he's just a you know very even keel guy. Knows all about weapons, and I'm talking about every weapon you bring up. Jim knows about it. He's extremely knowledgeable, as a matter of fact, and will help you get top dollar, too. That's the other. That's very important. You get more money. We will help you. He'll help you explore all the uh, options, take the work and stress off your shoulders, which is always a good thing. K&L Surplus and Ammo's on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, the lovely and talented Chris Eggert. So to explain to you, Chris, what's going on. <laughs> your voice has so much timber today. Oh, my it God. Does. I, uh, I'm allergic to Malaluca trees and they're blooming right now or blossoming or whatever the hell they do. But, uh, AJ's looking at pictures and it looks like the devil is as a tree. That's what oh. Malalukas look like. They're very, uh, AJ, would you say they're kind of scary looking? Yeah. It, like they look like a tree that would be in a forest of a Tim Burton film. If that makes sense. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. Like they got that kind of uh, aesthetic to them. I'll see if I can find a picture of them for you. They are unbelievable, but yes, I'm allergic to them. Always have been. Forgot about that. So apparently, Catherine and I went through a, went for a walk. It wasn't really a forest, but it was a you know like a parkland area. Yeah. Man, by the time the evening kicked in, I had a screaming headache. My voice was like this. It was like, I mean, it was much deeper than it is now. Hey, Catherine, what'd you like to watch? But so yeah, it'll, uh, I have to stay in the house today. I can't go outside. Because the doctor you, said if you go outside, it's going to get worse. Are you taking any allergy stuff? Zyrtec. Is yeah. that any good? It is, but I'm sure they told you this. Unfortunately, it doesn't just work for you. It's got to be like uh, you kind of got to build up to it to have it oh, you be do. really effective. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I This seasonal allergy thing just sort of kind of started hitting within the last decade or so yeah, for me. Yeah, that's it's, true, yeah. It sucks. And I think one of I think my oldest is starting to get it too now. And so I'm like, oh. <laughs> every day there's another text message of some crap. I'm, I'm like, well, try to take this and then take this and then do this and then take some Flonase and then stand on your head and then do a neti pod. And it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. We've already decided, Tevin and AJ and I have decided after the show today, we're going to go to the uh, recording studio and redo an entire Barry White album. That'd be fun. I've heard people say, "You, you got it going on." <laughs> it this is. would be like you if you smoked Marlboro Reds. <laughs> Do you see that? Jude's knocking on the door. Jude, what are you doing? Can you see him? Yeah, he's a little Don't dog. Open up that door. That death dust is going to be pouring into your place. I, well, wonder why he's knocking on the door. Now, you better talk for a second because he'll not. He won't stop beating on the door. I'll let him in. I want to watch this. Yo. Okay. 
Chris, what's going on? What's what are the top headlines for the day? What uh, what is something that maybe I missed out on that I need to be in the know about? Did anybody first off? Are your eyes okay? Yeah, because I saw you take a picture and look directly at the, <laughs> at the eclipse yesterday. You look straight up at it. I know there were some mm -hmm. clouds, but I want to make sure you in your eyes. Are <laughs> yeah, oh boy, we're, we're uh, everyone was gone eclipse crazy over here uh, and everywhere pretty much yesterday. Um, yeah, I was out walking the dogs. I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh, look, it's two o'clock. I think I'll take a picture of the clouds. And uh, yeah, that yeah. Yeah, was uh, stunning. So you just couldn't see it at all? No, not at all. Yeah, I, I, a couple people, I, so I put a picture up on social media and a couple people tweeted me who are like in Carver, New Ulm. Like every once in a while, there'd be a little bit of a break in the clouds here. So some people were lucky enough to see it, but uh, not not very many. Were you able to see it, Tom? No, I don't care though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I could have seen it, I suppose, a little. I, but I think where I am, there was just a little sliver. Yeah, it would have been just a little bit, right? Yeah, right. So I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm for one glad to see the eclipse gone. <laughs> I was, <laughs> and I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm, I'm, I guess part of what I do is part of the problem. I say that, D dude, the national media can just ruin the fun out of anything. They That's ruin true. Caitlin Clark. They ruin the freaking eclipse. It's like, just stop already. Let, let it, let it happen without having to overhype it and turn it. Are you guys, are you picking up what I'm throwing down here? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, you brought up Caitlin Clark. I still thought that was the most classless thing I've ever seen when that NBA, I think she was a WNBA player. Uh, you're going to, you think you're a big deal now, but wait till you get to the W. Yeah, you wouldn't want to welcome her in or be nice to her. You wouldn't want yeah, to do that. Yeah, I know, but there's got to be a lot of, God. I'm sure there's a lot of jealousy from the WNBA right now going mm -hmm. like, because she seems like, you know, the best thing since sliced bread when yeah. a lot of them have already been there. And it, it will be interesting to see how, how she does in the WNBA. It'll be interesting to see if Paige Beckers goes and if, how how she does too. Yeah, but right. um, I don't know. I, I Back to the Kate and Clark thing. I mean, I just, I, I think it was great for the, the profile of, of women's basketball as a whole, but I, I, I don't, whether or not she, um, you know, ends up having a great WNBA career. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out. You know, what's great about that is you didn't hear the superstar that he is, former NBA player, who, uh, when he was in college, set that record in the first place. And he never mentioned the fact, yeah, well, I did it in three years. She did it in four. He it's never pistol, mentioned that. It's Pistol, pistol Pete, Pete, right? Maravich. Mm -hmm. Pistol he's, Pete he's, Maravich. Is he, is he still alive? I thought he was. Is he not? I don't God, think he's I still alive. Oh no! I love Pistol Pete. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he's still alive. I think I, I looked must, this up when I was fact checking that record God, a couple I months must ago. Have, I must yeah, have ignored yeah. Mer Merovich died in uh, 1988. What? When he was 40? Yeah. He's 40. What did he die? Ah, uh, I don't. I don't know. Let's I'll see. look. You know that does make sense, and I didn't know he's dead. You know why? Oh, heart failure is what got him. Oh God! Really? The guy was in it's great 40? shape. Jeez. And 40. He died oh. suddenly while playing a pickup basketball game. Oh, God. Uh, that's depressing. I'm, I'm glad I didn't know this. Now you guys depressed the hell out of me. I know. The rest of my life. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Man, I'm telling you, after 40, it could happen at any freaking second of any <laughs> Shut day. Up. And I, I'm Stop well, talking listen, to me. I know, I'm, but <laughs> you're remi that's another reminder of it. He was so – you ever go back and watch some of his – Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, he, yeah. guy had just – so fun to watch it's so much like flair right like just yep. he, he, he could do it but he made it look pretty love guys like that i think that's a good way to put it. he made it look pretty there's no quote god I'm, i was glad that i didn't know that he was dead i know i don't know where yeah. i was that i would have missed that because i there's no bigger fan of pete maravich than me so i'm i'm glad i didn't know that yeah i'm depressed now i guess i can't i guess i won't go there pick up go. Pay, play pick up basketball <laughs> way to go made to go my friend that's all i've got to say to you you know i was i was rebounding for my daughter the other day just rebounding for about an hour and i was sore for about four days <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh my god well, dude, yeah. you're such a piece of crap yeah well uh, you know you helped your daughter out though so that's no, good I, I i was there i was there when she needed me but 
Now you know what they're doing to me. Now I'm going to look up all these people who are dead that I didn't know were dead. Thanks. Oh, don't, don't, don't. It's too depressing. Yeah. Just keep the memory up here. Too depressing. That's all I'm saying. Matter of fact, by coincidence, I just got depressed yesterday because I'm driving along with Catherine in the car and California Love came on and I was thinking of Tupac that's been dead now for how many? uh, He's been dead a long time already. Hasn't he? He's probably been dead longer than he was alive. Probably. I would guess, because he was, was fairly like young. Mm-hmm. And but, that was in the late 90s or no, early 90s when he died. Probably right. God, that was 35 yeah. years ago, maybe? 96. Also, 96, about 30 okay. Years ago, but 28 years ago. 25 years. Or he was 25 when he died. He was 25 years old. I never met him in person, talked to him on the phone one time. He was a very nice guy. He's a really, very, very pleasant guy. You know, there's a whole, like, I went down the rabbit hole on the Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh, yeah. Tupac mm-hmm. bit when she started, like, coming out and doing all, saying all these really, like, uh, I don't really know how to characterize it. Well. Uh, uh, <laughs> saying all these things <laughs> recently. Yes. Yeah, a lot going on. Man. Will Smith, I, I say what you will about him. He needs to get out of that situation. Oh, he definitely does. <laughs> he definitely does. I feel they'll both be better off. Just go. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, you're both better off. Separate. Get get away from one another. It's probably yeah, and way. help us all out because and every time yeah. she says something, it's crazier and crazier. You know what I would love is like you know, Catherine's out playing pickleball this morning now. Nice. And I would love that. So I'll but I can't go outside today, so I can't go watch her play or anything. So when she gets home. What if Catherine came home all of a sudden? Yeah, I decided to shave my head after the last pickleball game. I'm like, okay. I don't know. Looking at Catherine with a shaved head, that'll be a little weird. I mean, listen, Jada Pinkett Smith is beautiful. Oh, she's she's beautiful. Been, she's been able to pull off whatever kind of haircut. Yes. It's just yes. the more they kind of crack open the whatever's going on in their relationship, the more it's oh, just God. like, oh, man. Oh, yeah, okay. It's not pretty. You're right. It's not pretty. There's no question. Oh God, you got to get going here, man. I always have to look over it because you you have other duties. <laughs> Tom, I have so many other duties. You can't even. Well, you had to push it, didn't you? That's <laughs> trying to give you some praise, and you had to go way I over have the top. So many important things to go get to right now. Yep. <laughs> I want you to do me a favor and shave your head for tomorrow's show. I want you to All do right. that. Done. All right, Pally. Well, thank you, sir. Have a good day, you guys. Bye. YouTube. Channel 5's Chris Hager brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Honnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at number code 952-925-5608. I really hope that my voice isn't like this tomorrow because it's getting weirder by the minute. Is it like, I feel like it's almost, are you getting to the like ticklish in your throat? Yes. Okay, yeah. that, that's annoying. I know what you mean. That is happening. And I'm, I'll sound exactly like, Lily! I'll be Herman Munster by the time the show is over. <laughs> you rang? You rang. There you go. Lurch. Lurch was wonderful. No cool. You know, that was a good era back when the, the Adams family and the Munsters. And I loved all that stuff, watching those things after school or whatever. You guys ever watch those shows? I was a little later for that. How about you, Tim? Yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah. A little bit of that. Like they would always play on not Lifetime TV Land. Yeah, TV Land. I remember racing home to watch Gilligan's Island with my little brother. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe the only like fourth grader to <laughs> yeah. sprinting home. Sorry guys, I can't come on and play. Gilligan Gilligan's Island is on. Hell yeah. Okay, answer this for me. Yeah, because I heard the song and it says a three hour tour, a mm-hmm. three hour tour. Why did uh, Lovey have about 17 different outfits she brought with her on the boat? Yeah, there's not a lot that (laughs) makes sense. Because even if you took your boat and just drove three hours straight out, you're going to crash on an island. Somebody should be able to find you. I would think. Like a three-hour tour? It shouldn't be that big a deal. And they were stuck out there for, what, about 12 years or something? Yeah, I think something like that. But somehow managed to survive. They always had nice clothes on. Yeah, it was good old oh, yeah. Gilligan. Oh, you're absolutely right. She had all her diamond necklaces and everything with her. For a three-hour tour, she brought it all along with her. Okay. Yeah. I did love that show, though. I thought it was very, very good. The yeah. Skipper. Yep, The Skipper. Yeah, he was cool. What was the uh, Swiss Family Robinson was the other, like, the movie that was similar to yeah. that yeah. kind of concept where they get stranded. Love he was another guy, by the way. Alan Hale played Skipper. 
Mm-hmm. He used to come into the KQ Morning Show once in a while with his skipper hat on, by the way. He always was wearing his skipper hat. And he'd just come in and sit around and do the show with us. He was just a great guy. Really nice guy. Don't you, don't you like that when somebody... I mean, this guy's on television for, what, 20 years, something like that? Yeah. I mean, he just didn't let it get to him. He's just a really, really good guy. Uh, one time, as a matter of fact, show ends and goes, hey... Alan, do you want to go grab some uh, early lunch or something? He said, oh, yeah, that sounds great, Tom. I said, where do you want to go? He goes, where do you think I want to go? Long John Silver's. <laughs> <laughs> he really leans into the character. Yeah. He does, yes. He leans into it. But. This guy's exclusively eaten fish for the past 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all there is to it. You're absolutely right. All right, we do have to take a break here. We'll be right back in a couple minutes. More of this going on. Josh Arnold coming up in about uh, 15 minutes, as a matter of fact. Kristen Burt at the end of the show. She always wraps it up beautifully, don't you think? I think oh, so. Oh, yeah. Really? I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, I am I got to do it to her. We <laughs> shall take a break. Be right back in a couple minutes. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Hi, guys. It's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. I was just going through some uh, some headlines. And again, uh, if you just tuned in, it's because I got too close to Malaluka trees on a walk yesterday. I am allergic as hell to them, and that's why my voice is so deep. It does sound weird, doesn't it? Yeah, extra raspy today. It's raspy too, isn't it? Yeah, it's not just deep, it's raspy. This is how I imagine you sounding at like 13 to most people. That's about right. Yeah, that that is about right. There's no question. Just a little kid walking up with like a box of candy or something and then sliding it across the counter. Hey, little boy, is this going to be all for you? The Reese's Pieces or whatever? Yes, sir. I'll (laughs) 
I'll uh, also ki- t- keep the change while you're at it, and then slide the change. It's a couple nickels across the counter. I had that on just because I was gonna maybe have somebody from Livy on, but I forgot to turn my phone off. Sorry about that ring. That was no, you're good. good. Very unprofessional is all I have to say. But then you save it with that voice. So, yeah. do you guys? Uh, matter of fact, this goes for you guys and uh, all the listeners as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got about 40 minutes to the end of the show, but after that, I'm putting myself out there. Um, if you need me to call and threaten anybody because they owe you money, just give me a call <laughs> and I'll take 20% of it. Hey, where's the money? Right that actually, now. That sounds like an unbelievable business idea. Like, right? I'm telling you. Like you've heard of Cameo, right? Where people mm-hmm. you can have oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. can hire people like, hey, you know, happy birthday. I'm this former athlete or whatever. Um <laughs> let's get it set up to where you can hire people to just threaten people anonymously. And Tom, oh, and there we go. Yeah, and you're back. There's something where whenever I, if I hit the wrong thing, man, that thing just blacks out. So I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, sorry about that. Go ahead. No, but no, you're fine. I think I think we can lead the way with you as our anonymous threat. And you can hi- hire a threatener today. Yeah. Or your career could also be the voice that they use when, like, they have criminals that are going to, you know, tell a story about gang violence and they black oh, yeah. out their face. You can yeah. be voiceover for them. <laughs> yeah. They no do time. lower their voices, too. They slow their yeah. voices way down. So it's like. And when I was 11 years old, I joined a street <laughs> gang. I was like, Jesus, I guess you did, didn't you? But yeah, I could, uh, for 20% of whatever they owe you, I will call them and go, hey, hey, you owe my brother, my, my, my boy Tim uh, some money, and it better be in his hand by 5 o'clock. That's all I'm saying. Don't make me call you back. Then just hang up. What do you think? <laughs> My response would be, do you want cash app or Zell? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Get it out there, man. There are guys that have voices this deep all the time. That's the amazing thing. Some guys have very deep voices. But what the hell, right? Yeah. Right. So anything else going on in the world we should know about? I was just looking at some headlines in the Wall Street Journal. Oh, you know what? I, I can't, uh, it doesn't appear on my laptop anymore, my desktop anymore, laptop, whatever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. But um, what what's that thing with the celebrity news called again? I always forget the name of that thing. Like just like entertainment news, like ET or People Magazine type of thing? No, it's oh, the one that, uh, that used to appear on my screen. Wise Brothers. The, uh, the, the Wise Brothers, there you go. Sheet. Complete sheet, yeah. The complete sheet, very good. Okay, now I can bring it back up because I couldn't remember the name of it, but yeah. Because I do like that. They throw some good things there. The black market that delivers Elon Musk Starlinks to U.S. foes. What the hell does that mean? I don't even know what any of that means. Do you guys know what he, they're talking about? <laughs> That's a lot of words. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I, have, I don't know if I comprehend them. I, do, do you know that either of you know what the hell they're talking about? Well, isn't Starlink, it looks like, is like a spaceship Oh, okay. A space program type thing where yeah. they're launching. So, yeah, they're not giving it to any of us. We're not his enemy. But Yeah. Okay, it works for me. I love this headline because it shows one, two, three, four, five young people. They look to be in their early teens mm-hmm. uh, watching the eclipse. Mm-hmm. I don't like the headline, though. Here's the headline. The young people watching the eclipse, the moon, the sun, the sun's. Flaming eyeballs and the eclipse to remember. I don't know if they had to throw the flaming eyeballs thing in there, did they? <laughs> did people burn their eyes? I suppose there might, must have been a handful of people that did burn their eyes. Well, Tom, it's funny you if it's funny you bring that up because yesterday, so like on Google, you can look use a feature that you can look at like how much something was searched, how much a term. Mm-hmm. So if you want to look at like Uh-oh. like if you search C- Caitlin Clark, you're going to see over the past month she's probably been searched more on Google than in the past uh, couple of months yeah, or whatever. Yeah. If you look at just yesterday on Google, the Google search, my eyes hurt, <laughs> was very low all what? day, all day. And low? then at 320 in the afternoon, Uh-oh. it peaked to the highest it's been in, <laughs> in a long time. So you just have thousands upon thousands of people Googling my eyes hurt after staring directly. They're flaming eyeballs at, like you just said, right at the, uh, the solar eclipse. Why would you stare at something with your bare naked eyes? That makes no sense. <laughs> and like every time you hear the word eclipse, 
it's always followed by don't look directly at it without the glasses. Yeah. Like there's always that disclaimer. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's, that's the thing that threw me off. Apparently in like the totality, when it's fully covered, you can take yeah. it off. Because I saw a, a clip of some Texas weatherman mm -hmm. was like crying during this like it was the most beautiful thing and i get it it's, he's passionate about it but he like immediately goes i'm taking my glasses off and everybody's like whoa 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 he's oh, like no it's God. okay it's fine apparently when it's fully eclipsed like it was in totality yeah. mm -hmm. it's okay to look at it but right when it's like a partial that's when it's super dangerous yeah it went right over dallas didn't it yes i believe so i think mm -hmm. dallas was the spot in texas with that you might be talking about because i know it a lot of people got involved in it there was a guy that i saw him interviewed on national tv yesterday he has seen and these eclipses, sometimes they don't happen for like 25 years apart, right? Mm -hmm. But this guy's seen like six eclipses. I mean, how the hell could you see that many? Are, oh, he, you know, I'll say he's definitely got to be a, like a astrologer type person where he just yeah, follows probably. the eclipse yeah. around wherever it be, wherever it goes. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great. I can see video of it and that works for me. I, I don't care about solar eclipses and Minnesotans don't either because it's always cloudy when they happen. So <laughs> it is always cloudy in Minnesota when there's an eclipse. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Did you guys see some of like the cool photos and stuff that uh, people took? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that got me thinking, like, I know that out there, there are a couple of amateur photographers who probably didn't have the right technology and now yeah. have permanent eye damage just trying no. to, trying oh. to get the perfect shot. Oh, that's not good. I know. It's terrible. That is not good. I, I actually have a burn hole in my right eye. The cent uh, center of my right eye is completely blurred. Really? Yeah. It has been since I was, I think like nine years old. Huh. Was is there a cause for it? Is it like a cataract type blur no, or really stupid? I was nine years old living in North Minneapolis and I was gonna prove to everybody what a tough guy I was. I'll show you how tough I am. I'll stare right into the sun. <laughs> and I did, and I paid the price. No. But I was only nine, you have to understand that. Oh, I, honestly, God, it burned a hole right. Like, I close my left eye now. I cannot see your face, Tevin. I can see your head, but oh. I can't see your face. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. Yeah, <laughs> laugh it up. You know, I'm in agony. <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt. I got to be honest with you. It does not hurt. But that's such a, like, eight-year-old, nine-year-old thing yes. to do. Like, <laughs> I'm going to prove how tough I am. I'm gonna... I'm I had a, than you are. I had a friend when we were probably, like, second grade, third grade, something like that. And at lunch he thought it was he was like a tough guy because he could hold his breath until he passed out or like really a, yeah and his, oh his face would turn like beat dark purple and just <laughs> smack down he goes and we, he i thought he was crazy but he thought that that showed how tough he was i just saw that and i don't know what show it was on it was a young black kid who could do the same thing he could make himself pass out it was really mm. weird to watch it's like what the hell so they just hold their breath until they pass out you would think that your system would just kind of kick and go okay you need to inhale some oxygen right yeah nope he yeah i watched it <laughs> multiple times just sounds like a lot of brain damage <laughs> oh yeah he's not the brightest <laughs> today but we love him anyway yeah good for them yeah, well there yeah we love him anyway that's a good way to put it we shall take a break. Be right back. Josh Arnold will join us right after this. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy, too. will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. 
Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code TOM, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is Josh ready to go? Josh, I'm ready joined. to go. What's happening, pal? What's happening, pal? Well, I want to find out how your trip went to to Disneyland or Disney World. Disney World, yeah, we went to the, it was look. First time I ever went to Disney World, I was working at WAPE in Jacksonville, Florida. I was like twenty six, maybe twenty. I think I was twenty six though, maybe twenty seven. But we've been going back constantly since then. But I will tell you one thing, and I, I had to wait for you to pop on here because you're a financial guy. <laughs> Right. So we had a great time. Got on all the rides. We, I think we the only we we didn't get on Ratatouille. That's the only one because there was like a two and a half hour wait, and I'm not going to stand in line for two and a half hours for anything. Just not going to happen. But I did not know this. I talked to a friend of mine, Timmy. This is his name. He and nine of his family members, you know, the kids and the and you know, the husbands, the wives, the grandkids, the whole deal. There were ten of them total. And he went to buy 10 of those complete passes, they're called. Every, you can right. get on everything. You're the first ones to get on. You don't have to stand in line. You just you give them the pass and you get on the ride and all the rest of it. As he was about to uh, take care of the deal, it was pointed out that those 10 passes cost $10,000. thousand dollars a pass. Unbelievable. A thousand bucks for a little kid to go into a ride. So you knew about this, Josh, is that, or are you just commenting? I am commenting. And yes, I did know about this. I've heard about this time before. And it is like, whoa, how does a family afford to go to, I still call it Disneyland, even though it's, down in Orlando, and it's Disney World, and there's all kinds of uh, building that's been going on in Orlando. Oh, yeah, and Orlando just explodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, up a northern Florida is just exploding in it terms of people moving in, uh, escaping, we'll say, high tax. Uh, high tax states, high tax cities, mm-hmm. um, and heading to to Florida as my as my children uh, have done. Well, two of three. No, two of three uh, did relocate yeah. into relocated to Florida as uh, son number one and his family have said said we're moving from the. Uh, high tax, high crime, school problem, city of Chicago, mm-hmm. where he built homes and condos and did real estate development, moving to uh, Tampa to do the same, but Tampa has a lower crime rate lower taxes Mm -hmm. and as he has pointed out a lot better opportunities 
You know, it's interesting you bring that up because just last night on the news I saw a report that a large number of millennials are moving to Tampa, not just the older people or whatever. Millennials are flocking to Tampa, Tampa Bay, uh, Florida. It is, it is exploding there. It is. Yep. Uh, I went to, went for a visit several weeks ago. I had not been in that area for a lot of years. I am surprised, surprised at the, at the building going on mm-hmm. and the construction and the business. But yeah, we'll a- go back to the, We'll go back to Disney. Uh, Disney's parks uh, right now are one of the keys to driving Disney stock right now. Okay. Uh, on the back of, we'll say, uh, activist activist action coming from uh, Nelson Peltz. Oh, sure. And he started pushing Disney again, um, we'll say uh, late last year, in an attempt to get some board changes and to initiate some other changes in the direction of Disney. Well, Nelson Feld did not succeed in his attempts to get on the board uh, he did succeed in, we'll say, helping to boost the stock price, and we'll say helping to light a fire under the board, so that they're now pushing for a better succession plan for the CEO Bob Iger, and trying to make some other changes to their business model. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do have and have had a problem in my estimation, with ESPN, which has been a, I'll say, an issue for more than five years after cable companies started to get heat uh, from their customers. Hey, we don't want to pay extra in our cable bill for ESPN not offering what we what they used to offer and you know compared to what we can get on other channels yeah and we're starting to see or sports fans were starting to see on other let's call it platforms such as Google's YouTube uh, and Amazon getting involved in sports Apple getting involved in sports. Right. Yeah. Uh, so people said, uh, e- we don't want ESPN on, on the cable. So that has been a drag on Disney's uh, numbers. And then there's Disney's push into streaming. And again, they're not gaining subs. They are losing subs. Really? Yeah. Disney is so far behind. They thought, well, if we start charging separately for streaming, instead of packaging all our content and selling it to the cable operators or even the other networks and making a lot of money that way, Nope, we're going to pull it, this content from other networks, and we're going to have our own streaming service. And we'll first give it away for free, Mm -hmm. then we'll start charging. Well, after a while, people are looking at all the streaming services they have and saying, you get most of the stuff we want on Netflix. How many others do we need? Yeah, Netflix, Hulu, and Disney. Amazon Prime, probably it. Yeah. Disney gets Disney gets dropped, along with several other streamers. So that becomes another issue. So Disney, I think, has got a people will disagree, but I'm not 
I'm one of those people. I'm not sold so much on on the streaming, but I do know that Amazon makes a little money from Amazon Prime with the streaming, but they're mm-hmm. you know they also are you know developing content uh, which is expensive. Apple has got streaming, and then you've got Google with YouTube and YouTube. I just happened to see with the young, I don't know whether it's gen, Generation X. Uh, Generation X even prefers, statistically, uh, YouTube over TikTok. I would. Okay. I understand that. Absolutely. And that could be a very interesting issue with or for Google and how they develop that and develop their advertising. Google, by the way, has a uh, event today uh, to promote to promote themselves and their some of their initiatives, including AI, and to announce some new chips that they've developed with uh, ARM ARM Holdings. So that's another. Uh, Royalty-driven uh, computer, or actually a chip developer, that fits into the same category as Qualcomm. Uh, I have. This is just personally. I'm not a chip investor. Uh, looking instead to uh, get companies that utilize the chips, not. Uh, not manufacture the chips and we'll stick with the chips because the chips act uh, pushed through uh, by um, I'll say the current current administration as another effort we'll say to juice the economy and bring uh, semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States has sprinkled money uh, across several different uh, chip, we'll say chip foundries, including uh, global foundries, which manufactures more legacy chips. Intel, which got a lot of dough, like $8 billion to develop a chip plant in, in Ohio. And this was about the same time that Intel announced we're losing money on our foundry business because their foundry business is not yet advanced to the uh, higher speed AI chips. It's still some of the legacy chips and Intel has lost a lot of money. And their CEO says, we're going to need more government money. I'm thinking, wait a minute. You're fucking, you're, excuse me, you're Intel. <laughs> Check that out. Check that out. I love it. Yes. I love it. Now, I understand this is cable TV, but, uh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's wonderful. No, this is, you got me going here on this <laughs> the exactly. industrial policy here. These are private companies. Yes, you know, we're capitalists. If you're capitalists, you don't need the government money. Go out and get your own. Go yeah, raise the yep. money. Yep, it's true. I'll close with this one, Josh, because this is okay. a good, great way to close. You ready? Ready. He's a friend of mine. You should invest your money with Josh Arnold, you effers. What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think the regulators would go for it, but me, I, I would. I would go for it. I'm a. I'm just an. I'm a. I'm, I'm an old guy. I've been around for a while. Been through a lot of up and down markets. Uh, I'm going to be here for a long while, or at least until they put me in the box. Sure. Uh, I'm like a fine. Wine or whiskey, I get better with age. Oh, here we go. I'm perfect by any by any stretch <laughs> of the imagination. Uh, but 
I've been around. I've been through up markets and down markets. Been able to reasonably navigate through. I've got some good ideas. I have take a uh, a concentrated, focused approach to managing money, and I'd be happy to to work with you. How do people uh, reach? Call me. How do they call you? <laughs> they can call me at nine five two nine two five five six zero eight. That's nine five two. Nine two five five six zero eight. You always get straight talk, not sugar coated advice. Geez, I've been on the radio too long to be able to repeat that, huh? Or drop the f bomb, either one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you on Friday, Pally. Thank you. Thank you, Josh Arnold, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. That got me out of <laughs> I didn't see that coming out of Josh at all. No. Um, we got to take a break. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Another effort. Kristen Burt coming up next. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, you are. Or we are. Or somebody is in any case. Okay, Chris, I have to ask you. Well, I'm asking uh, Tevin, you, and AJ, um, do you watch ESPN? Occasionally. Occasionally, uh, mm -hmm. sports station, all the rest of it. I just realized after, uh, between dropping the F-bomb and doing his report, that Josh Arnold was talking about ESPN and they're not doing very well. I cannot remember the last time I watched ESPN. It just doesn't, I don't know what it is about it. I don't hate it. I just never watch it anymore. I used to watch it all the time. I right? used to watch it all the time. They used to have figure yeah. skating quite a bit. Um, and that was kind of like in its heyday, Dick Button was there. I mean, doing the color commentary, he was fantastic, but a lot of the sports has moved over to Peacock to NBC, at least the sports that yeah. I watch yep. mm -hmm. figure skating gymnastics, because they handle so much of the Olympic level sports that having a Peacock subscription is actually worth it for me. Well, there you go. And I, I just, 
what happened to you? Uh, so, Tevin and AJ, this is for you, I guess. What did happen with ESPN that people just don't watch it anymore? What went on? Yeah, I mean, I still watch ESPN regularly, but, I mean, they haven't really had anything new come out. Like, they're not oh, – okay. there's no new shows. It's just kind of the same shows, different voices as, you know, certain hosts get older. They did add the Pat McAfee show because I think they realized that their ratings oh, yeah. are struggling. And yeah. so if you want to hear some F bombs, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They just yeah. took his podcast and put it on ESPN, which is oh, wild because yeah. you're yeah, he just F this and F that. Yeah. But that's at and least I think the only time it made news was when Travis Kelsey was on it. I mean, that's oh, when I was like, yeah. Oh yeah, we did a lot of quotes around that. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say about ESPN, they were known for doing a ton of great documentaries, 30 for 30. Fantastic. Yes, yes. I feel like right. they have not invested a lot of money in that recently because I I used to listen to their podcast too. And you you know, watch all of the films. And I'm like, where are they? And they're like, the new season's coming and then it'll be four episodes and then it disappears. So I don't think, I think that they've fallen off that as well. Yeah. Kind of seems like it. I just haven't watched it in a long time. I used to watch it all the time and just, I don't know. I didn't like go, oh, I don't know. I just stopped watching. Didn't I didn't make an effort to stop watching it. I just don't watch it anymore. Well, Weird. Disney has toyed with selling it. Yeah. Not you know, not knowing what to do do with it because it is losing money for them. Um, mm -hmm. but live sports are the things that everyone still is going to watch. So yeah. for whatever reason, Disney has not figured out what that uh, uh, you know that magic key is. Honestly, to unlock the ratings the way other streaming networks have. So I think that that's going to be a real struggle. You know, they've been a, a classic cable channel, but they've yeah. got to figure out a way into twenty twenty four and beyond. Was it the guy before Iger came back? Did he just destroy that company? What the hell? <laughs> Chapik did a number on the company. Ugh. And you have to remember that, you know, he didn't have a lot of experience. And you have yeah. to remember Disney is a is a company that is has its hands in a thousand different types of cookie yeah. jars. Yep. And he came from the parks. So that was his, you know, baby. But other than that. Like he didn't have no understand the television and the film business, right. cruise ship, all of these things that really took a hit during the pandemic as well. And I think that they needed, they probably needed Iger guiding them through the pandemic and that just right. didn't happen. That's really stupid. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So what's on your docket today, sister? Did you get the Disney World flu, by the way? You sound a little no. It's uh, gravelly. Got a little gravelly, man. I already talked about this a couple times, but I scared a little kid by talking on an elevator this morning. Dad, I'm afraid. Cause I'm hey, how are you doing? You're an octave no. blower. I am allergic to malaleuca trees, which are in southern Florida. Mm -hmm. Again, they they look like a monster tree. They really do look like a monster. But yeah, I I cannot go outside today. The doctor told me you can't go outside today. You're gonna have to stay Zyrtec. in, take some you know Zyrtec or whatever. But just to to readjust because I don't think they want my voice to be like this for the rest of my life. Pro probably not anyway. Mm -hmm. Allergy yeah. season's no joke. Oh God, it's kicking my ass this year. I'll tell you that it it really nailed me. So I don't know if that was just from running around Disney World and because they don't. I don't think Malalukas are up that high. I think they're they're kind of down more around the. From Fort Myers over to, I don't know, Jupiter maybe. I don't know. But it just, yeah, it kicks my ass. I'm, it's unbelievable. So sorry about that. Do a good job, Chris. I will do my best, Tom. <laughs> uh, really I went to see Civil, Civil War last night. So I saw the screening of that. That'll be out later this okay. week. And uh, this is about photojournalists, like war type of journalists, uh, that are embedded in some of the military operations. Of course, it is civil war, so it means a civil war within the United States. Um, this movie is dark, and it's meant to be. It's meant mm -hmm. to make you feel uncomfortable. Kirsten Dunst plays, um, I would say, a, a war journalist who's probably been at the job too long, no longer like affected by what, you know, she's compartmentalized everything she's seen over the years. And of course there's a young one coming in that she tries to mentor who of course is oh, eager yeah. and thirsty. But uh, if you go see this, it's a really well done film. This is not going to leave you with like, that was, 
was a great film. Oh my gosh. Can you believe you're not going to walk out light and happy. It It's designed to leave you unsettled. A lot of the images feel very real. Some of the situations feel like they could happen in the United States based off of the political climate right now. And, um, it, it just makes you, it, you kind of walk away thinking about the movie quite a bit, which I think is good. It's a sign of a good movie, but just mm -hmm. understand this is not your light, fluffy comedy, rom-com, you know, have a good weekend type of situation. Right. That does make sense. So you liked it. I did like it. Yeah. I am completely unsettled by it. It is loud. It's violent. Um, the dialogue's uncomfortable. The situations are uncomfortable. And um, if you're looking for a thinking man's movie, this would be it for the weekend. What about a thinking woman's movie? A, a thinking person's movie. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I caught you. Ha -ha. <laughs> Snuck up right on you. It was unbelievable. Um, is there anything great coming out? I mean, we're in a situation now where we're about to kick in. Did they actually kind of kick off a summer season? Because they used to, but I don't know if I don't know if they do that anymore. Do they do the summer season still? The linear networks still do a summer season, oh, okay. which is primarily mm. unscripted shows. Mm. It's where you're going to see all of your game shows come into play, reality oh, okay. competition shows. So that's going to be the, the primary of what you're going to see on ABC and Fox and, and NBC and CBS. Um, and I will say that the content is definitely slowing down even on streaming right now. Yeah. Yep. And for a variety of reasons, budgetary, some of the effects of the strike still in play here. And we're starting to see, I can see the slowdown. Like even I usually get a list for the week and I'm like, there's nothing yesterday nothing today oh, yeah. you know it's, it's one of those situations where um and there's good things coming don't get me wrong but we are not no longer like and i it's definitely here we're no longer gonna have the week where we're like gosh there's 10 new shows to watch this week yeah. that doesn't exist anymore because oh, the economic climate has changed in hollywood it's so amazing you added all of those channels over the past 25 30 years and now you have less content on most of them kind of weird it it is weird and um i we talked a little bit about this yesterday and i i wonder if we're going to start seeing a swing for longer seasons because yeah. we're seeing the thirst for suits and white collar the office that thirst has never mm -hmm. gone away friends mm -hmm. if you can watch 26 episodes for one season that's a little bit more entertaining than yeah. I, I think about like hacks is coming up one of my favorite shows that hbo has done over the past few years but let me tell you, it's been almost two years since we have seen it. And really? some of that, you know, Jean Smart um, had a health crisis in the middle of filming season three. She had heart like surgery. It. She is okay. <clears throat> um, but then the the day that they went back, they had five days of filming after her health crisis. Guess what? There was a six month strike. So that <laughs> oh, they just, you know, they didn't have any luck. Um, but that's it. And I, I sit there and I think, am I going to have to go back and maybe watch like the last two or three episodes from mm -hmm. season two yeah. just to refresh my brain? I kind of have an idea because I really love the show. But at the same time, I'm like, I need to make sure I know where all of the characters, not just the two main characters are um, and where they wrapped up right. because there's a big shift for season three. And I, I think that that's the real struggle here. And there... I think we swung so far one direction. We've got to find that. We've got to come back to the middle again. Yeah, that makes sense. What is the name of Gene Smart's show? It started, I think, last year, maybe the year before. It's Hacks. Hacks. Yeah, there you Hacks. go. That's a yeah, good that's what show. I'm yeah, that's it's a, really a great good show. show. Hacks is incredible. It's back on HBO beginning May okay. 2nd. If anyone has not watched it, I will tell you, it's some of the best comedy on it television is. loosely very loosely based on kind of joan rivers life and what she went through yeah. yep. um but gosh gene smart is probably one of the best actresses out there i would have to agree with you but yeah so it, it is coming because i don't it has it been off the air for like months and months and months yeah it's been almost two years so this two was the years. show that she yeah. took the yeah she had the break with the health crisis for season three yeah okay so yeah. it has been two years i thought mm -hmm. so because i we, Kath and I loved that show, and all of a sudden it just went away. Yep. Oh, and, you know, it, it's just, and, and they filmed, like, the crazy thing is this was one of the shows that actually filmed very early on in the pandemic. They figured out a way to do it. They made mm -hmm. it happen. But, unfortunately, the strike, the strike was the thing to, to slow everyone down. And, of course, having heart surgery. But, you know, Gene Smart did say that 
even though it was terrible for the crew and the cast to be off for six months, it was the right. best thing for her health. And she doesn't know if she would have finished season three or if they yeah. would have had to take a pause anyway, because she was trying to come back in two weeks after her heart oh, surgery. Gosh. And her doctor's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and so he was like nine weeks, nine weeks yeah. and you can go back to work. But she realized how tired and fatigued she still was. And, yep. you know, in the end, it probably worked out for the best that she was able to get, regain her strength and then come back at 100 percent. You know, you just made me sad because you mentioned Joan Rivers. I adored that woman. Did you ever spend any time with her? I didn't, but God, I, I, greatest. my grandmother loved her. And so I yeah. watched a lot of her because when my grandmother would babysit me, she would keep me up. And when she would fill in for Johnny Carson back in the day, yeah, uh, right. she would keep me up to watch. And so my parents would be like, why is she so tired and cranky? Well, hello. I was up watching <laughs> the tonight show. Um, and she, she had an extraordinary story. She was definitely one of those comedians in an old boys club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I kind of wish she was still here to comment on the world today because oh she'd have a God. lot to say. <laughs> she was brilliant. I mean, she could ad lib. Her writing was fantastic. She was a, just a sweetheart of a person. For that edge that she had on TV, she didn't have any of that off television. She was just a very sweet person. She had a documentary that uh, she did, I want to say, maybe about two or three years before she passed away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... It was so interesting to see her insecurities because she always came out there like yeah. so confident and so sure of what she did. But the insecurities of like trying to stay relevant and she was a workhorse and just saying, I, I got to get back out in the road. I got to keep on touring. Mm -hmm. And she did that up until the absolute end. So uh, and I don't remember the name of it, um, but it is worth a watch because I think you really see how multi-dimensional Joan Rivers was. She yeah. wasn't just this like, you know, coming out of the Catskills type of comedian. Um, and, and the effect, you know, her husband committed suicide. Right. She was shunned by Johnny Carson. Uh, there was a lot of grief and sadness in her life. Was that because she did fill in for other people, not just him? Why it's he because she her. started her own late night show. Fox oh, gave her right. that was <clears> opposite <throat> Johnny and he never spoke to her again. And in fact, she was banned from the Tonight Show. All those years through Jay Leno and everything else until Jimmy Fallon eventually invited her on um, during one of his anniversary shows. And it was her big return. And I think for her, it was, you know, I, I think for her, it was a relief to not feel like that she was completely banned from the night, the tonight show for good. And, you know, that was a thing that I think behind the scenes, they just kind of kept, well, that was Johnny's wishes. And, you know, Jay Leno honored that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Jimmy Fallon's like, this is bananas to be doing this. I just don't understand why people get like, I, I went through that personally. I don't want to say who it was, but everybody in Minnesota would know who I'm talking about. I had a friend who was a morning guy on the radio in Minnesota. He was my friend for years and years and years. We worked together. We had worked together all the way back in the early 70s and all the rest of it. But as soon as I took the job at KQRS, he never talked to me again. I have not talked to him in like 40 years now. I mean, isn't that weird? It would just, somebody's going to take this job. Why can't it just be me? What's wrong with that? I, I mean, always think that it's about them and never about you. Isn't yeah, that suppose. weird, though? I suppose. But it hurts yeah. you, too. That's the weird thing. Yeah, I mean, it just, you know. And, of course, then later on, because he was being such a I don't know, pain in the ass, I did a call him and go, hey, you got to. No, I didn't do that. I'm just making it up as I go along. It's, it's a lie. It's a flat-out lie. All right. Hopefully my voice will be back tomorrow so I don't sound like I'm going to kill people. And Tom, just one quick thing. Um, the yes. documentary, I looked it up. It's called Piece of Work. It came out in 2010. Oh, Piece so, of Work, yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely worth, uh, if you want to revisit a little Joan Rivers comedy, it's worth it. She's mag one of the greats of all time. There's no yes. question. She's missed. That. She is indeed. We will talk to you tomorrow. I'll be here. Thank you, my dear. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Any closing words, fellas? Um, I will not be going to Illinois anytime soon. Um, apparently, there are two types of cicadas that come out of the uh -oh. ground yes. once every 13 and once every 17 yep. years. And yep. this year is the year where they both come out at the same time. And uh, so, Illinois, keep your head on a swivel. Because oh they're going to be everywhere. Because they do attack people, don't they? 
I mean, I don't know if they necessarily are attacking people, but they're big enough. They hiss. They're like, yeah, they do. Because yeah. I hate them. <laughs> and so, yeah, pretty much anywhere south of Illinois is uh, going to be infested with these cicadas. So be safe. You know what I'm going to predict for tomorrow? What's that? So I came on the show today. And then tomorrow I'll talk like this. All of a sudden it'll all go away. And there'll be nothing in the middle of, hey, how you doing? How's everything going? You think that'll happen? It's going to overcorrect. Yeah. yeah, I'm fingers yeah, crossed yes. the overcorrection. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I'm going to overcorrect for tomorrow's show, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thanks, fellas. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you.